<laughs> Welcome back to Daytime Live. We are joined by talented oh. cinematographer Gabriel Blackwood, who is mm -hmm. here to tell us all about the amazing Jamaican short film, Flight. Yes. Welcome. Uh, welcome. But you know what? <laughs> Before we start, let's take a quick look at the trailer. Right. All right, let's take a look. What is it with you on the moon? Eh? Come in, Kingston. Kingston, this is Mars. How far is the moon again? Just 384,400 kilometers. Just enough kilometer that. That. Like, I like, love that. Like, I want to know what happens now. Well, I don't can't tell me. Don't, <laughs> tell, don't, tell, don't tell me. Don't tell me. It's a really good trailer. But Thank just you. want to say congratulations, though. Thank you. Um, on the film actually being shown on HBO Zone last night. Yes, it How was. did this all happen? So, well, I'm the cinematographer and the colorist for Flight. Um, Kia Moses is the co director and writer for Flight, as well as Adrian McDonald, who is the co director for Flight. And basically, Flight came about because of the Jaffa Propeller Initiative. Um, it was one of the finalists, and so we made the film, and then we got into the American Black Film Festival, mm -hmm. and then they, it was one of the five short films in the HBO short film competition. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it is now on HBO Zone. At mm -hmm. least it was shown last night. It's going to be shown again on the 16th. Um, which is a Sunday at 11 a.m. And on the 10th, as of the 10th, it will be on demand on HBO Go nice. and HBO Now. So everybody can That's see it. That's really good. It's so excited. That's really I'm good. Extreme. We are all excited. We, I'm excited. I'm like, yes. The Cannes Film, Film Festival. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how was that? So we actually went to Cannes twice. Uh, we were in Diversity in Cannes. Right. Um, which is a separate film festival by itself. Right. Um, and then oh, we were... Oh, there's two different, diversity. Two, right, but it happens while the, can, the main can event is happening. Ah. And then we were actually there before at the Pan-African Film Festival in Cannes. Mm -hmm. So, and we won both. Um, both in, we won in both in, for best short film. You heard that a while ago, the, the, the subtle brush of a shoulder. <laughs> yeah. And we won. But that's amazing, though. It was, it's been a journey. Categories. It's really, really yeah. nice. And I see um, Kia on magazine covers. Yeah. Yes. Things happening, amazing things are yes. happening. Yes. But I also like the fact that you shot the film mm -hmm. in the Grand Span community. Yes, we did. Right? So what was that experience like? Why Grand Span? And tell us a little bit more about that. So just to give you a little bit of a background in terms of the story of flight, um, what Kia wanted to do was she wanted to demonstrate who would have the most or who would be the most unsuspecting, unlikely person to have the biggest dream because we are an island, a small island with big dreams and big dreamers. And so she thought of who could that person be and that was somebody who was in the inner city. And so we were allowed to shoot in Grant Spen. They were so lovely um, mm. with us. Um, we had a blast of a time there. And I mean, even the actors, Rohim and Craig and Zbeck, well, Zbeck is an experienced actor. He's the father in the film. But Rohim and Craig, it was their first time, um, you know, acting as well. Um, and they have a similar background. So it was very, it was, in, it, everybody enjoyed it. Um, mm. It was a good learning experience for them and they were excited as well. That's very great. I mean, speaking of a learning experience, you have creatives out there who probably are thinking of doing a short film. Yes. But they need a push mm -hmm. to do so. Mm -hmm. what, what kind of advice would you give them? So now, maybe about, I would say about, Five to ten years ago, there weren't as many avenues to create a short film, especially if you may not have had a film background or you may not have the funds to do it. But now there are initiatives like the JAFTA Propeller Initiative mm -hmm. where you can submit a treatment. It's through JAFTA, the Jamaica Film and Television Association. Actually, okay. the call is out now um, and it ends on the 2nd of March. So we get a submission, we get submissions of treatments and then 10 are shortlisted and then five of those are selected and they will be awarded this year $500,000 each towards your short film as well as $125,000 towards the rental of equipment for the short film. Mm, that's each. amazing, that's really good. Yeah. And I'm loving the way the Jamaica film in industry 
is yes. just doing some amazing yes. stuff, you yes. know, and I'm really proud of particularly this film mm -hmm. because it licked about Italawa, you know it what I'm is. saying? It's, it it's such a great representation of us as a, as a nation, as an island, you know, I'm really proud. Mm -hmm. um, I know that you mentioned there's some other dates that the movie will be shown on HBO. Right. Is there anywhere else that, that Jamaicans or Worleans can view it? So right now, it's just completing the festival circuit that we've been doing for a little over a year. Um, the next place that it's been seen is at the Toronto Black Film Festival this mm -hmm. month, mm -hmm. as well as a Pan-African Film Festival wow. in LA. Wow. Um, so it will be shown there. But outside of that, right now, it will be on HBO On Demand as of February 10th. Yeah. On Demand means that, you know, right. so at least if you miss the date that it's if scheduled you miss to show date, again, exactly. then at least you can get it exactly. on demand. That's really, really great. Yes. Wow. Thank you so much for joining no us on problem. the show and telling Thank us all about this me. amazing film. I am super excited because you know the creative industry is my yes. thing. You, you know, I used to act. Really? Yes. Trust me, there are lots of projects going act, on no. now. Okay. All so right. We can talk <laughs> after this. We can talk. Daytime now, we'll be right back. And we're talking about the hot new exhibition, Jamaica, Jamaica, right after this. In Jamaica. Work out me. My resume, my acting resume, you know? But Start you know what my the... issue is? I have submitted to join that. Welcome back to Daytime Live. It's Reggae Month, and what is more fitting than to celebrate our culture of reggae with an exhibition? We are joined by Sebastian Carayol, who is here to talk about us, uh, to talk about Jamaica, Jamaica. Welcome. Thanks for having me. She's been practicing oh, how Carayol. to Carayol. Yeah, Carayol. Yes. You did Carayol. pretty well. I did pretty well. That, Thank that's you. it, Carayol. Carayol. Yeah, hey. she's good with names like that. <laughs> <laughs> what inspired you to put this exhibition together? Um, so the initial sort of idea of the exhibition was this uh, notion that where I come from in France, you get, if you love Jamaican music, you get access to just a certain facet of it, you know, like the, the biggest names. Mm -hmm. And uh, now being really into this culture and the sound systems and things like that, I realized that how much they have counted in really creating the bigger stars in reggae. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's bigger than just this bigger star. And some, Sometimes it's a bit underground in France, like people don't know what sound system culture is and things right. like that, or never heard of like Sugar Minot, Dennis Brown, you know? And yeah. to me, it was sort of like getting deeper, deeper into this music. I always thought there was a form of almost injustice in mm -hmm. what we would have access to. So initially I started as a journalist writing for reggae magazines. Mm -hmm. right. But after a while, after years, I realized that when you write for people already in the know, they know. Oh. And I wanted to bring it to, you know, like my aunt, my grandma, and I want, I want to know. bring that culture to people mm -hmm. who don't know. So that's how an exhibition to me is a perfect vehicle for that. Yeah, that's really great. So you have art form from creatives such as um, the late Peter Richards, uh, Maxine Walters. Who else do you have? The idea was to show um, first uh, artifacts from, let's say, legendary studios, because uh, it was very important to show that... Uh, um, sound equipment, if it's old, in mm -hmm. a lot of places, people are like, oh, it's old, it's rubbish. But mm -hmm. really, it's like part of history and it's conferring value to mm -hmm. the history of music itself. Right. So first, that, that's, there's a big body of that, like uh, sound gear, let's say. Right. And then the idea, too, is like when you do an exhibition like that, right. is to open, uh, have different cultures mix, different level of cultural involvement. Yeah. That's why I wanted to have some fine arts, too, from the National Gallery. Right. Not me, I mean, we're three curators. So mm -hmm. Herbie Miller, Jamaica Music Museum, a lot of the things we're showing come from his collection, mm -hmm. okay. Jamaica Music Museum, and the National Gallery of Jamaica, mm -hmm. who has a lot of fine arts that can link to the music if you show them in the same uh, context. Right. Uh, for instance, there's this uh, uh, one that pops in mind is uh, Sidney McLaren, a Jamaican painter, mm -hmm. intuitive painter, yeah. who paint uh, from postcards of Kingston. So mm -hmm. he painted that really great painting of uh, Parade, Mm -hmm. And he didn't think of music when he did that painting, but Parade is a very important in the history of Jamaican music because there was Randy's there, it's the bottom of 